Welcome to our daily reflection on the Gospel lessons from the Book of Common Prayer Lectionary. My name is Father Bill Lytle and I'm Director of Christian Formation at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. And today is the Friday after Ascension. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into heaven, so we may also in heart and mind there ascend, and with him continually dwell, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Our Gospel lesson today is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, beginning in the seventh chapter at the twenty-first verse. Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many deeds of power in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Go away from me, you evildoers. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Now when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Here ends the lesson. Well, we come today to the end of the Sermon on the Mount, after spending the rest of this week away from it in readings that commemorated the Rogation Days and then the Feast of the Ascension. Now, as Jesus brings to a close his most famous sermon, perhaps the most famous sermon ever preached, what we hear from him are what should be some of the most frightening words that we ever hear from Christ. He tells us, that in the last day there will be those who come before him and who think they deserve entry into his kingdom only to be told that they are sorely mistaken. Many on that day will say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not do many mighty works of power in your name? And Jesus answered to them, Depart from me, I never knew you. These are not people with a casual or passing interest in the Jesus movement. These are people who have done miracles, supposedly in Jesus' name, and yet that does not afford them entry into his eternal kingdom. And so what are we to make of that? How are we to make sense of this? How are we, who perhaps have not prophesied in his name, have not cast out demons in his name, have not done mighty works of power in his name, to make sense of this, that the people who do those things, or claim to do those things in his name, are not given entry into his kingdom. What hope then is there for us? Well, I think the key is found throughout the rest of the sermon. Because these people, these people that Jesus is referring to, who come before him and in mock humility say, Lord, Lord, on the last day, are not people who have really known him. They are not people who have really followed him. They have made perhaps made a show of following him. They have perhaps claimed to follow him, but they have never known him. They are the ones who perhaps have heard these words, but they have not done them. They are the very antithesis of everything Jesus has been saying that his followers should be like. 
They are exactly like the people that Jesus has warned against the entire sermon. They are like the Pharisees who pray on the street corners or those who have a trumpet sounded before them when they give offering. They have done all these things in one way or another out of their own self-interest. And Jesus is saying, just because you put my name on it, doesn't make you immune from that type of sin and that type of failure. Just because you say you're doing it in Jesus' name doesn't mean you are. It's very possible to do many things and claim that you're serving God, but really what you're doing is serving yourself. You have heard the words. You know the right words to say. But you're not doing the words. Each and every one of us can easily fall victim to that. Each and every one of us can easily find ourselves in the place where we have deluded ourselves into thinking we are doing God's will, but really we are just serving our own will. And that's why each and every one of us have to take this warning very seriously. These people who come before Jesus on the last day and say, Lord, Lord, they are hearers of the word only and not doers. They are the ones who build their house upon the sand. And they may have built some very impressive houses. But in the end, when the winds come and the waves crash, great is the fall of those houses. True followers of Jesus are called not just to be hearers of the word, but to be doers of the word as well, to internalize it, to take it to heart. And that does not necessarily mean prophesying and casting out demons and doing mighty works of power and being perfectly righteous or anything else you might assume that it means. Occasionally, when it is his will and the time is right and the need is there, he does empower his followers to do those things. But above and beyond doing any of those things, what he calls us to be is poor in spirit is mournful and meek, is hungry and thirsty after righteousness, is makers of peace and pure in heart, and endurers of persecution. That is, those who have humbly surrendered to his grace and his love alone. And no matter how humble the shack, those are the houses that are built upon the rock that cannot be shaken. Mm-hmm.